Good morning, good evening, wherever you are across the world and the universe. Welcome to my Quantum Living podcast at the intersection of science and spirituality. I'm your host, Anna Anderson, quantum teacher, intuitive guide, and above all, an inquisitive soul. This podcast is about how we can bring the various spiritual, metaphysical, and esoteric concepts and ideas validated by quantum physics and modern cosmology to the very practical level to improve and enrich our life experience as individuals, communities, and the humankind. Whether you are listening to this show while driving or commuting, doing chores around the house, relaxing on a couch, or flying in a spaceship across the galaxy, I hope you'll enjoy today's episode. Okay, let's begin. Hello and welcome back to Quantum Living and to my new mini-series Quantum Chat, where in each episode, together with my special and returning guest, Maren Muter, we will focus on just one topic, one burning question, one quantum mystery that probably everyone has a view on, but no real answer as we can only speculate and guess, which is fun. (laughs) Hello, Maren. It's so good to have you back on my show again. And thank you for joining me in this special series of Quantum Chat. Thanks for having me, Anna. And I'm really enjoying these questions. They're a mystery to me as I show up here, (laughs) just as they are a mystery to everyone else. So I'm excited to hear what you have in store. (laughs) Okay, here we go. Today's question is a big one. Can we manifest what we want? And if so, how? This is one of my favorite topics. There are so many different opinions and schools of thought on this. But interestingly, unlike our previous questions about sleep and time, this one can be supported empirically to an extent, as we can tell which approach or strategy has worked and which one hasn't, although people's experiences also vary. Now, There are two key aspects to this question. One, whether we can change our destiny or not, to begin with, and then if we can, what strategy is best, and if we can't, what options do we have to live the life we want? So two key points of view, if you like, two aspects. And my view is that, yes, we can change our destiny with a caveat to a certain extent. And that threshold is the real mystery here, as we simply don't know what we can and cannot change in our future. There is strong scientific evidence that we create our reality with our thoughts, intentions, and emotions. Plus, this is also my personal experience as well. Scientifically speaking, we can collapse a wave of possibility in the quantum field into a particle of matter, which we are all doing pretty much all the time. In terms of how, I have tried various strategies and got a typical quantum result, which defies explanation. Sometimes they worked, sometimes they didn't. Even swapping places, if you like. So one thing worked at some point, and then it didn't work at another point, and vice versa. My key question here is, when I decide to manifest something in my life, and I do, was my manifestation already predestined, <laughs> which would close the, the, uh, the loophole, if you like. And my key point about deterministic position is that I feel it would be very scary to know that I have no control over my life, my destiny, and it would be quite demotivating. I mean, why bother to take any action? I might as well go on automatic if there is nothing I can do to change my reality. By the way, I have written a couple of articles in my blog section on my podcast website on manifesting, the art of manifestation, and vanilla slice, which is quite funny, so people might want to read it as well. Can we manifest our reality? And if so, how? (laughs) Marin. <laughs> hmm. All right. So the first thing I want to ask everybody is, 
if we create our reality through intention, mm -hmm. I want you to think about that statement really quickly. Mm -hmm. Can we recreate a reality through intention? That is a big pill to swallow. That takes a lot of ownership because I'm going to use myself as an example. Did I manifest my son to die? Would I, I would have done anything in my power to make him not die. Every intention in my body would have been, I don't want my son to die. Okay. So when we look at manifestation, we're looking at material goods. What do most people want to manifest? They want to have a good job, meet somebody to share their life with, have a nice house, uh, maybe win the lottery. We have all of these things that we want to manifest, and this is all material. Now, in the world of quantum theory, there is something called the principle of least action. And we have to remember that our body is a particle. Mm -hmm. So, and this is, I'm going really fast, so this is a hyper abridged version of the principle of least mm -hmm. action. <laughs> the particle takes every possibility mm -hmm. that it could possibly take and reaches every end point that it could possibly reach. And then it takes and basically combines all of that up to be the most harmonious, basically. The... Um, yeah, it's not the shortest distance because we're not working on time. It is um, basically the most harmonious way that the particle can go. Because we are a particle, because this body is both a wave form and a particle, because it is the thought process of our consciousness, then we are playing out the principle of least action, meaning we are taking every single possibility and Every single endpoint simultaneously, no different right now that it could possibly take. So, if we're trying to manifest something material, let's say, then we are going to have it happen and we are not going to have it happen. So, that's why sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't work. Nobody's doing anything wrong. So everybody says, oh, you know, I've, I have these great intentions. I'm thinking positive thoughts. I have no negative doubt. I have no doubt that this is going to happen. And someone says, oh, there must have been a seed of doubt in there somewhere because that's why your manifestation didn't work. But in reality, you're both having that happen. It's already predestined. And you're both not having that happen. It's already predestined. This entire life has already played out. It has already expired. It expired at your inception, at your conception. When you were conceived, in order to have conception, you have to have death. And it has to show up at the exact same moment. So they come together. You can't, it's like having a coin. We can't have a heads without a tails, and we can't have a tails without a head. So that's the same as our right when we're created, when this particle created, it also expired along with every single possibility that it could possibly encounter. So that's a big answer for a manifestation. And I tried to do it quickly. So now you can ask me <laughs> something else <laughs> about manifestation. Well, thank you. Yes. And I've got a couple of, I have one extra question. And uh, just to say that I am now putting this topic on our list for other episodes. And the topic is that multi-experience of reality that you and I have spoken about on our um, full episodes as well, with your example of a coin, which has two sides to it, and uh, the notion of us experiencing every possible outcome, if you like, at the same time. Because, as I said, there is a lot to, to be said about it. But just in a nutshell, my key question on this is that, yes, we know looking at, when we are looking at a coin that it has two sides to it. When we are looking at an apple, we know that it is round and has other sides to it. But I sense what has been escaping in those conversations that we've had about this issue, for me, 
is that while we are aware of the existence of those other parts, if you like, we don't see them simultaneously. Mm -hmm. We know that they are there, but we, we can't see both sides of the coin at the same time. We need to flip the coin to see the other side. So unless it's a translucent <laughs> coin and we can see through, you know, and we can see both sides at the same time that are overlapping. Usually in our physical reality, we can't. So we need to take some action. We need to flip the coin. We need to turn the apple or walk around it to see those other sides, which we know exists. So the topic that I would like to explore on another episode is that multi-experience versus multi-awareness. Would mm -hmm. you like to just briefly address it? Sure. This is, by the way, exactly what the, my book, uh, the quant your, your Quantum Brain, is about exactly mm -hmm. what it, it goes into through the eyes of a okay. chocolate chip cookie. So it's easy to swallow. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll include the link as well oh, okay. in, in the show notes to, to the book. Mm -hmm. Our consciousness is not inside this body. Our consciousness gets to see all the sides because it's not in the third mm -hmm. dimension. This body is inside the third dimension and we are inside this frequency for this particular body and you for yours. Meaning because we're inside this life, in this, we, our brain, has this incredible veiling system mm -hmm. that is allowing this particle to go in multi-directions, to be in multiple places simultaneously, because that actually can happen. And we have filmed this and witnessed this in the lab, not from a human, but in multiple atoms. And that's why we don't get to see all of it right now. But our consciousness is seeing all of it right now. Our consciousness is watching all of these things play out simultaneously because our consciousness isn't inside the third dimension. Only this body is. So there it is fast. <laughs> yes, absolutely. But once again, we, in our limited observation mm -hmm. capacity, we can only focus on one we can't see. We're actually focusing on all of them. But not consciously. We are literally focusing. Yet You are conscious of them. Okay. Because to me, this would be like, mm -hmm. say, instead of seeing just one plane of reality, it would be like having like 100, just as an example, 100 or 1,000 little tiny monitors in front of my eyes. Mm -hmm. Well, I wouldn't be able to go on with my daily living Mm -hmm. with 1,000 monitors, each one showing something different. No, that's exactly right. And that's why our brain creates a veiling system to veil mm -hmm. off each monitor. Now, yeah. each one of those monitors thinks it's the only monitor, and it mm -hmm. is just as real and tangible and thinks that it is, I mean, it's just like this one that we are on mm. a trillion times Yes. just as real and tangible. And our brain is the veiling system. So people talk about this veil. It's our brain is the only thing creating a veil between the ethereal and this life. And it's the only thing creating a veil between each trajectory of this life, yeah. each screen of this life. That's yeah. why we can't, because otherwise it would be so noisy, we would get confused and we don't get to see it. We would just go crazy. <laughs> but it's incredibly important for this life to experience both sides of every choice, both sides of every experience, because it makes the life whole, total, and complete. Lovely. On the list for another episode, because this is a very important and huge topic. <laughs> so there you go. A brief explanation of whether we can manifest what we want or not, or at least some food for thought. Thank you so much, Marin. We'll see you in the next edition of Quantum Chat. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. And again, please let us know what you think about these Quantum Chat episodes. And if you have any questions, also let us know. You can do this very simply by going to Anna's website, which is in the show notes below. And by clicking her website, it's going to take you to the full show notes, which includes her email address. All right. I'll talk to you later, Anna. Thanks for having me again. Thank you so much. 
That's all for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you really loved it, please post a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify to encourage others to listen to it. For the show notes, guest and podcast info, reviews, comments, and much more, please visit quantumlivingpodcast.com. And if you'd like to dive deeper into quantum living and explore how you could work with me, please contact me and I'd be delighted to help and support you on your quantum journey. I am your host, Anna Anderson. I look forward to connecting with you in the next episode of Quantum Living. Until then, keep your vibrations high and be well.